very good morning to you all and a warm welcome to you all to our third Sunday of Easter uh, worship service in Norfolk Central Circuit. I hope you will enjoy and you will be blessed. Now we are going to begin our worship as we sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which was written by Joseph Scriven, 1834. So we begin our worship. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. come before the Lord in prayer. 
Gracious God and our Father, you are always with us. You are with us in the day and in the night. You are with us when we are happy and when we are sad. You are with us when we are in good health or when we are unwell. You are with us when we are peaceful and when we are worried. Today we feel sorry for all those who are in isolation, in pain and in fear about what tomorrow holds. Gracious Lord, help us to remember that you love us and you are with us in times such as this. See us, Lord, as your family, as we are here to worship you. Amen. Amen. We share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, how Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are going to listen to the reading for today, which Christine is going to lead us. The reading is coming from Luke chapter 24, from verses 13 to 35, on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they were, as they were talked and discussed these things, with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here? the things that have happened there in these days. What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth? They replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road 
and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. May the Lord bless his reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be known to you, God our Father, our strength and our rock. Amen. Amen. Let me just say uh, in a brief reflection, today's gospel reading, the story of Cleopas and his companion on the Emmaus road is one of encounter. The two disciples fleeing all that was agonizing and painful about the events in Jerusalem, including Jesus' death, they meet a stranger on the road, a stranger who seems oblivious to what has gone on, but seems incredibly well-versed in the scriptures, and to have a particularly interesting take on take on, on how they can be interpreted. He talks to them all the way to the house and is eventually invited in as a guest. It is only then, as they break bread together, that they realize that it was Jesus, somehow miraculously back from the dead. And as they try to understand this truth, Jesus disappears. Looking carefully on this story, I'm sure you will all agree with me that meeting someone on the road and inviting her or him into the house is not something we can do at the moment because of the coronavirus uh, lockdown. However, the story has lots of encouragement for us as we reflect on what it means to be disciples of Jesus in the strangest of all Easter seasons. Firstly, in verse 21, where Cleopas reflects on the sadness of Jesus' death, he says, we had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. We had hoped. I would like us to take this message today, this Sunday. We had hoped. That seems like a powerful phrase to summarize how lockdown and the effects of coronavirus virus have affected many of us. We had hoped. Perhaps we have already lost loved ones to the virus and had hoped for so much more, for longer with them, to be able to be with them at the end, to be able to attend their funeral, and even throw a thanksgiving service at the end. Brothers and sisters, we are dealing with the grief of we had hoped. We had hoped. We are dealing with the grief this we had hoped had done to us. Perhaps we had made plans for April or May or for the summer, which have now been thrown into jeopardy by this pandemic. We were looking forward to an exciting moment or a holiday. We were planning to see family and friends. I am going to just have a chat with my garden during my holiday. I will be just having a chat with my garden, not going anywhere, but we had the hopes. We had hoped that, that we will be somewhere. Brothers and sisters, we had hoped for so much more like Cleopas had done. Perhaps we have found the change to our rhythms and the patterns deeply disturbing and we are struggling right now to balance the new demands on our time and also our energy. Brothers and sisters, we had hoped for so much more. We know the pain of grieving disciples as they walk the tiresome road 
and yet Jesus comes into their midst. This is the great joy of the resurrection stories in the Gospels. They all point us towards being a people of hope. We cannot always be happy. We cannot always rejoice. We may need to grieve, but we do not grieve as people without hope. Rather, we look for the encounter with Jesus even in the middle of pain and anguish. Even among broken dreams and lost hopes, we still look for the stranger who join us on the road of life's journey. This stranger is Jesus. He is there. He is be beside us, telling stories, breaking bread, sharing love and grace. These dark and difficult times are the hardest ones in which to recognize the stranger. I often wonder if Clopas and his companion even looked up to see Jesus whilst they were on the road with him. Perhaps they just walked with the weight of grief, looking down perhaps with their heads covered with their hoods, not even looking at this man who walked with them. Maybe in times such as this, this is what is happening to us. We are walking with the weight of grief, but we can't recognize Jesus is with us. Jesus with, 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 is with us. Wherever you are today on your journey, however you feel about the hopes you have lost, Jesus wants to come and sit and eat with you. Will you welcome him into your life, into your family? into your hopes which are currently dashed. As my dearest brother rightly puts it, John Wesley, the best thing of all is that God is with us in joy or in pain. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray. But before we pray, I thought I have a special song for those who are feeling unwell, just to remind them that the great physician is now near, which was written by William Hunter, 1811. The great physician now is near, the sympathizing. Jesus, he speaks the drooping heart to cheer, oh hear the voice of Jesus, sweetest note in Sarah's song, sweet Yeah. 
charming man of Jesus, sweet as nail in Sarah's song, sweet as nail on mortal tongue, sweet as God, raw Son, Jesus blessed Jesus. In our prayers of intercession, when I say, uh, Lord, hear us, you say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that may make wise decisions, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and the protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We are now going to say a prayer for the offerings. We know there are people who are offering their their uh, offerings through direct debits and other means, other ways. Let us pray. God, our Father, we pray that you receive these gifts of money that we bring in different ways to you for the building of your kingdom. We ask you to bless these gifts and also bless all those people who are bringing these gifts in Jesus name. Amen. We are going to sing our final hymn. This is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. We are going to sing from here. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. A of salvation, a chance of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. See you. 
God bless you for coming. Yes, our Reverend Jack is going to give us a blessing. A final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those we love this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you everyone for coming. I hope you will listen to the melodious singing. Yes, I think it was better listening to you singing. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll, we'll, we'll do it so live. We'll make sure the new number is communicated for next week and Jen and I will leave it. Yes, I'm going to send it straight away so that everyone will have it. Yeah, have a good week. Bye bye.